Two days before he died, he wrote me a little letter and he said to me, stop worrying about me. I haven't given up on life. And for me, I mean, I took it as a sign. Well, he's, he will be fine. Even if he dies, we're going to raise him up again. He'll be fine. I know, just one touch of God. I've seen literal thousands of miracles. I've seen thousands of miracles. So one touch of God and it's fine. And the night he died, he actually died in my arms. And as he died, God said to me, he's not coming back. And I... I just watched this incredible film called Sons of God. Have you seen it? The lady next to me in church patiently waited for my response. Yet all I thought, I must have done something wrong, that even my fellow church members don't know that I've made Sons of God. Sons of God was my life project, and now it was seen by hundreds of thousands. I loved reading all the testimonies of people who watched it. It inspired so many to step into their calling. And how it felt like God had catapulted me into mine. People would criticize me and say, why do you, uh, you know, why are you sick if you pray for such a lot of sick people? So I don't think it's we pray for sick because we're healthy. We pray for the sick because God says we must pray for the sick. I was reaching so many people, yet soon after the release, I couldn't cope with the fact that people had to pay for it. So I decided to give it away for free. And now everyone had access to the film. It spread rapidly around the globe. It was seen in churches and broadcast to the networks. Naive as I was, I just thought I would reap what I'd sown. And in a way I did reap. The fruit was immense. One young man said the film literally stopped him from leaving his wife and ending his life. However, while the film took off, things went downward for me. Making a film was an ideal medium to inspire, while I could stay in the shadow. And a voice spoke to me under the shower and said, go to church tonight. And the guy that took me said, come on, Kubis, let's go to the front. And as my knees hit the ground, the Holy Spirit just overwhelmed me. I started crying for no reason at all. I cried and cried and cried. Never been in a Pentecostal charismatic type of meaning. Didn't know what it was. And as I cried, I realized something was happening to me. I started changing. Nobody was talking to me. And all of a sudden, I started speaking in other tongues. Nobody teaching me, nobody talking to me. I spoke in tongues for more than an hour. They carried me out of that church. I just had a mindset that it shouldn't be about me. It's not a wrong thought, but to me, this became a principle, an excuse to hide. So now everyone knew about my film, yet no one knew me. It was always explained to us that um, God calls everybody, but it depends on you whether you're going to do it. You know, it's obedience. Jesus, because of obedience, he did it. And he said, it's like a door. And on the door, there's called. And when you go in and you look back, you'll say you're chosen. So if you want to be chosen of God, just be obedient to the calling. It's so simple. Months went by. And because I gave the film away for free, I had no income anymore. I had to work hard to start a new business. And when I had just enough income to support my growing family, I began making my second film, Sons of God, The Other Side of Glory. A film that was more about keeping the hope in the middle of difficult situations. And I'm really looking forward to uh, showing you all the footage in the film Sons of God, The Other Side of Glory. And um, for now, I'm saying goodbye, leaving to Mozambique. The moment I started shooting the second film, I got into debt. And a few months later, I was personally bankrupt. And I felt like such a failure. I couldn't support my family. And the vision I had to reach the world now felt like a foolish thought from the past. Bye bye. Thanks. It was only in my quiet time with God where I was able to overcome my self-pity and small-mindedness. Every time when I chose to seek Him, He rebuilt me and He simply ignored my self-pity. 
Yet my circumstances didn't change for a long time. My business was not growing fast enough to pay off my debt. So I took an extra job as a passenger assistant at Amsterdam Airport. Dr. Jan, something's wrong with me. And he said, come quickly, let's go to the, to, the, to the bathrooms. And when we walked out of the church, I collapsed. And I realized I was dying. And they started taking my shoes off, they took my shirt off, they started rubbing me, massaging me, pumping my legs. The doctor took these veins in my neck and he started pushing these veins hard, hard. And he leaned over and he whispered in my ear, he said, you are going, we're gonna try our best to keep you back. And I realized I'm dead. I'm dead. And I looked down and I saw the preachers pumping me, the doctor pushing my veins, and I saw them Bibles praying, crying out to God, nine preachers around me, and I heard the worship, and I saw, but I was far away. And I heard my son Peter's, Daddy, don't go, Daddy, please don't go. And I looked down, and it was long, it was long. They struggled, they struggled, and I was in this grass, and I came a bit closer to my body out, and all of a sudden, it was like, bam! a shock and I was in my body and this was the weirdest experience ever. When I came back into my body, I felt like a young man of 16. I stood up and I said, where's my clothes? I got dressed, I walked to the pulpit and I preached for two and a half hours. I was independent, not willing to ask help for the risk I took. It was my risk and no one else's. At that time, a successful entrepreneur came to me and said, name a figure and it will be on your bank account tomorrow. I knew it was serious, but I kindly refused it. It was only when I finally reached rock bottom that I began talking bits and pieces with people about the trouble I was in. I was at the end of my rope and my second film had failed. At this point, I was finally able to surrender my independence. Kindly God showed me in the weeks and months that followed how His mercy can flow through His people. Even strangers that didn't know me began blessing me. I was sent to different places in the world just to gain some spiritual weight, just to relax and enjoy. I was blessed financially 10 times more in this season when I finally learned I couldn't do it alone. Not even alone with God. <laughs> What's that? Medicines. People leave their medicines and their doctor's reports and they, they got healed and they went home healed. I could never understand how could someone that has so much miracles in their life have how could Kubis die with cancer? I don't know. But what I know is Jesus is the healer. And I will not stop praying for sick people. I had to learn to grow past myself, past my ideals and insecurities. Even making this video, talking about my flaws, is only possible because I chose to rise above my self-doubt. There were so many crutches lying around. So Pietrus made his own sculpture here. He just tied all the crutches together and made a frame and he made a cross. Is this is not what Jesus died for. When, when things go wrong in our lives, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. If, if you're struggling with something, well, get your eyes on Jesus. <laughs> Jesus didn't come to give us an existence. He came to give us life and life is to enjoy. So even through the sickness, I'm concentrating on life. Jesus died, how he hung on the cross, how he was wounded, how the blood was shed, all to get us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. That's why we preach life and healing. And you know, sometimes we must realize we're in a fallen creation, but his plan is for a generation to take what he's done on the cross. And I think it's our time. I really believe it's our time. And I, for one, I want to run my race. So when meditating on all I went through, I can truly say, what a privilege. 
because in every circumstance God introduced a side of him that I could only have discovered in that particular season. That being said, I'm eager to tell you more about how God literally prepared the way when making the film. So I hope to see you next time.